Sup guys, Alex from Nothing Box TV here, and I have a question for you. Have you seen part one of my three-part Jack and Daxter trilogy game box special? After the commercial success of the Precursor Legacy, Naughty Dog went straight to work on what everybody assumed would become Banjo Fori. Just kidding, they made Jack 2 a GTA clone. <laughs> No one's ever made that comparison before, and it's hard, so that means it's just like Dark Souls. It is a little something for everyone. All jokes aside, calling Jack 2 a GTA clone doesn't accurately represent this game at all. Sure, you could steal vehicles and get in police chases, but it's not like there's any guns or boobs. Uh, it's GTA, isn't it? So Jack 2 begins with a similar monologue from Samus. Oh! Look, look the eyes are doing it again. That's, that's cool. I like how Jack always has one eye working. I, I, I could put whatever I want in that other eye. Are you sure about that? So we find Jack and friends on the precursor machine that was hinted in the special ending of Jack 1, only to have a giant monster guy appear out of nowhere, but also seems to know who you are. And Samo says something cryptic that reveals that he knows something more than he lets on. So this is how it happened. In a panic, Jack smashes that like button and you go through the portal to find yourself in what appears to be the future, separated from Samos and Kira, and getting yourself captured. But before we continue, I want to tell you about one of the greatest glitches ever discovered. Turns out, during that little intro sequence before you go through the portal, if you open the disc tray on your PS2, it'll ask you to put the disc back, and when you do and close it, it actually reloads the save, and you actually end up back in Sanover Village, it's just empty and desolate and super creepy. Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice, we get our first glimpse of Haven City. The Precursor Legacy had a pseudo open world that felt really organic and peaceful, and while there were only a few breaks in between exploring its world, it felt fragmented. Haven City definitely ditches the peaceful feeling, but feels so much more connected and real. The city is sectioned off between districts ranging from slums, to the bazaar, to an industrial looking area that looks like an all metal map in total annihilation, or to the more developed areas like Main Town where the wealthy nerds hang out. Each section had so much character and it was exciting to finally be able to get a new pass to unlock a new section of the city. Haven City is absolutely one of the greatest open worlds ever made. And it's just as big as... Crew. So after you get a face full of gun and got yourself tortured into a dark eco-weapon, Daxter finds your whereabouts two years later looking like a human oil spill. What is that pile? Also, Jack's first words after being a silent protagonist are really profound. Say something! Just this once! My name is Jeff. So you break yourself out and are confronted by a mysterious old man named Kor and a young boy named Cash. Let's go with Cash. Your talk with Kor is cut short by the King Crimson Guards and you go curse mark level 2 on all of them. Jack is incredibly confused by this new power but Kor acts as if he's pleasantly surprised. In a show of gratitude, he gives you information on how to find Torn, who also gives you plenty of missions that appear to be inconvenient for Jack but helps the city. Then Torn tells you about Crew who is dummy thick and gives you plenty of missions that appear to be inconvenient for Jack but also helps the city, and so on and so forth. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I think it's just really funny that in games like these, the main character is always getting asked to perform these world-saving tasks the first time and then told to do the most mundane crap the very next mission. Hey Jack, I know you just time-traveled and have been tortured for years, but would you be able to help us take up Baron Praxis and kill every single Crimson Guard and Metalhead that you find? And also on your way back, can you get me a Blonde Espresso Pumpkin Spice Latte with two extra shots? Oh, no, I'm not gonna pay you, but I'll throw in a couple guns to make your job easier next time I ask you. I promise I'm not gonna banish you in Jack 3. Which makes the perfect segue. Five of the six eco elements that were in the Precursor Legacy make a return, but in a very different way. Instead of eco being released in different areas throughout the world, you are given a morph gun instead, with each eco type being a different ability. Red eco is your boomstick, yellow eco is your rifle similar to your fireball in the first game, blue eco is your minigun, and dark eco is your chidori. And nope, the Boruto's dad references will not stop. Green eco is still used as your health throughout the whole series, and light eco is primarily absent in Jack 2, but becomes quite important in the final entry of the series. Series. But when it comes to eco, you're only going to be using the yellow eco mod and abusing the jump, spin, and spray technique, and only using the others when you're out of yellow eco. Speaking of eco, all the torture that Baron did on Jack wasn't just for fun, it was to turn him into a dark eco weapon with his new dark Jack powers. Throughout the game, you're going to give an oracle Metal Head Skull Gems to acquire more dark powers, which you're mostly going to use it to clutch with the dark bomb. Overall, Dark Jack does feel a bit underdeveloped these days and leaves a lot to be desired. But not only did they add Dark Jack and added some Grand Theft Auto elements, again. they looked at Tony Hawk and wanted to throw in a jet board just for good measure. They even added a jet park with a full blown scoring system that actually isn't terrible. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> For Jack 4, they should add uh, the Batmobile segments from Arkham Knight. That would be excellent. They should. Oh. 
That's right, they did that in Jack 3. It really is a miracle how Naughty Dog got all their new cogs working in this old 3D platformer machine. When Jack 2 was announced, I don't believe anyone would ever guess that this was the direction they were going in. Not only would fans see a departure in a mostly positive tone, they would be violently thrown into a bleak future where their protagonist gets treated worse than any other console mascot in history, to the point where he needed a voice actor. Why did you leave me? And you know what? Mario and Sonic just stood there and watched as our boy got tortured. I mean, I don't blame them though. I Crash went over to Nintendo wanting to throw hands. You know what though? I'd pay to see that. People dressed up as Mario and Crash beating the snot out of each other. That'd be better than any Logan versus KSI fight. And good thing the new mechanics are pretty good, because you'll definitely be pumping eco lead into every enemy you see since Naughty Dog heard her complaints about the precursor legacy by cranking up the difficulty. And not just going from easy to medium, but from easy to... Dark Souls? Now saying that Jack 2 is as difficult as Dark Souls is a complete joke, because I've beaten Jack 2 and I haven't beaten any Dark Souls, let alone my favorite boy Sekido. But Naughty Dog was absolutely snorting Dark Eco while making this game. Minimal checkpoints, brutal on-rails turret sections, the arrow races, Good men are at the bottom or broken, so which is it going to be? Surprise. What? It's me, Austin! and anything involving the drill platformer Dead Town. Basically, the whole game was made to be pretty difficult, and I'm impressed that uh, 13 and older me managed to beat it. Then again, 13 and older me had way more time to play the video games than current me does. So we talked about the Grand Theft Autos, and we talked about the Dark Souls. But how is the actual story? I think it's pretty good. <laughs> While the missions themselves help push the narrative along, the cutscenes are where you'll find the bulk of the story. One of the moments that really stuck with me was the platforming to get to the Baron's Palace. Another was opening up the Tomb of Mar, and all the not so subtle as I remember foreshadowing of who the boy you have to protect really is. But I think the best moment was the twist that Haven City was actually sent over village this whole time, and you discovered this by finding Samos' hut from the Precursor Legacy. I also like that you have no idea how many years have passed since then either. Well, I, I say that, but I checked the wiki and it says it was about 310 to 315 years. That that, that's a lot of Simpsons episodes. Jack 2 also introduces some nice newcomers, like Sig, whose peacemaker sucks way more than yours does for no reason. There's also Pecker, the interpreter for Onan, who is a comedic relief, even though Dexter already is. There's also Tess and Ashlyn who are thoughts. And everybody knows that Kira is the best girl. If they all can have their stomachs showing, so can I. I think the moments after the Tomb of Mars segment is where the game turns from simple missions to where the narrative really begins to start turning up the heat. You discover that metalheads are an alien race called the Horaquan, who are seeking the precursor stone that the Baron stole. While Praxis was supposed to give it to Crew, you put in your two weeks and then he blows up before he gets the chance to finish your schedule. Not only that, you found out the boy Why? is actually young Jack, which was like, not surprising at all. Then, in the finale, you find out one of the better twists in gaming. You find out that Kor was the metalhead leader this whole time, which is done subtly enough for 13 and older mean to not catch it beforehand. The Baron gets one-shotted by Metalcore and his final words are the weirdest I have ever heard. Remember, the first rule in making a bomb is to always make two. What? During the epic final fight with Metalcore, he reveals to you that in a less surprising sense, that you were sent back to the past to grow up away from Core, and that Haven City was Jack's present. But Daxter gets screwed because the past is his past. But why didn't Core kill Jack as a boy? He, had, he literally had years to do so. And in the end, you win, obviously, and you find everybody celebrating and having their final words. You see the flings between Jack and Kira, and Ashlyn and Torn, which absolutely did not get ruined in Jack 3. The story even ends pretty neatly, where people would be content with the story just ending there, but hints just enough that this isn't where the story ends. All in all, I love Jack 2, and I believe it's my favorite in the trilogy. But after playing Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us, I think there were some modern naughty dogisms that I wish were more sprinkled out in the Jack and Daxter franchise. I wanted Dark Jack to be a real concern for Jack. And maybe throughout the story, Jack looks worse and worse each time he uses it. Or maybe your health bar shrinks temporarily during a cooldown period. I just wanted to see more of a story element to Dark Jack, and not just a gameplay mechanic. So what did you think of Jack 2? Did you think it was a good evolution of the 3D platformer? Or did you think it strayed too far from the genre? Let me know below. And stay tuned for Jack 3 coming soon. And I hope you really like this. I hope you like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed.